Welcome, this is Mike from Digital Offensive, and you're watching my path to the OSCP. In tonight's video, we're going to look at the vulnerable VM called Sick OS. Uh, this version is 1.2. Uh, before, we, before we start, um, sorry for a delay in videos. Uh, I've been really busy working on some stuff on the side. Um, I'm going to be putting together a video shortly that will be covering some of the stuff around the CCDC. And for those who do not know what the CCDC is, it's the Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. I've been participating in the last several years as a Red Team member uh, for almost 10 years now, uh, maybe approaching closer to 12, give or take. And uh, part of that, we really look at ways we can get back to the students and help the students learn. So recently, the uh, last couple of days, I've been running as a site judge for a local school and participating in the Mid-Atlantic um, CCDC qualifier qualifier rounds and then tomorrow night I'll be running as a red team member again on the qualifiers and then uh, uh, I'll be attending the regionals as well as a red team member so some of the stuff um, over the last few days I've been taking some video of that trying to splice some things together come up with some solutions to some of the scenarios they had so um, after the qualifiers are over and everything becomes public maybe I'll release some of that information you guys can get a little look into what the CCDC is and what these kids go through. And if you're interested in learning more about it, let me know. But in tonight's uh, video, we're going to go through uh, the SIG OS 1.2. And basically, uh, I only have a little bit of time tonight, so we're going to basically look at probably just getting a, a, a local shell if possible. So we'll see what we can do. So over here on the right hand side, you see that we found our IP address 192.168.1.141. And let's do a simple map of this IP. Let's see what comes back. All right, so it comes back, port 22 is open, port 80 is open. So let's take a look at what port 80 is in our web browser here. All right, so we got the website loaded here. It looks pretty basic. Um, the one thing that jumps out to me on this website is it kind of looks like there's a script tag that's not being completed properly. Uh, something a little weird here. Uh, not really seeing anything in the source code. So let's uh, run Nikto and uh, we'll do some web enumeration of this, see if we come up with anything on this. So we'll run that web enum script that I created. And basically, what that's going to do is run Derby and uh, Nikto against this website. Nick Doe didn't really come back with anything. Um, it says powered by header PHP 5.3. So we can look that up, see if there's anything useful there. Um, Derby came back and actually found another directory for us. It found slash test. So we can take a look at what's in that test directory. So let's do open link. All right, so in the test directory, basically it just looks like it's an index. And it looks like it's running light HTTPD. So a couple things I'm interested in here. We on the main page, right? We saw on the main page we have these what possibly looks open in the code. Um, this may be like a PHP script, maybe a JavaScript or something running that we're not able to see the code. That's why when we do view selection source or just view source in general, we don't see anything in here. So that could be something we can look at there. Um, we can also Google that version. So let's grab this, see if anything comes back. I have a feeling Google in this though is gonna return us, bring us to websites that may have uh, spoilers. Let's try, see what comes up. Yeah, so you can see right away, there's a lot of giveaways to the competition, what you're gonna to try to do. All right, so one way we can take a look at that code um, at that web page and see what else is in there. We can use burp. So burp is basically a man in the middle proxy and what that allows us to do is basically um, review each request as it comes through, allows us to manipulate requests, allows us to stop requests, manipulate them on the fly and then resend them. Um, paid version allows full automation of scanning. You can do a slew of different uh, uh, security type uh, investigations or attacks using the burp framework. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go down to our settings, our preferences, go down to advanced in our browser, and we're going to change our settings. 
Winning user is 127.0.0.1 on port 8080. We're going to use it for all our settings here. The reason we're going to do this is, by default, Burp's going to spin up. When it spins up, it's going to basically already be listening on 8080 based on the configuration. So, we're going to go here, go down to our uh, web application analysis, go to Burp Suite. We'll start up Burp. You can see it's the free edition. All right, so it looks like there's an update. I'm gonna skip the update for now. And we're basically gonna just do a temporary project. We go next, we're gonna do um, startup burp with our defaults. And burp's gonna spin up. So we're gonna come over here, our intercept is on. So intercept is basically gonna make us rec uh, approve each request before it moves forward uh, within the browser. So intercept's on. We come over to options. We can see our proxies listing on 127.0.0.1.8080. And we have to define no target yet. So we're going to come over here. We're going to reload this page. Now you see it's not really doing anything. It's just spinning. We come over to our burp instance. Let's just go back and do it. You can see over here the proxy is highlighted yellow. And that's because the intercept is listening. So if we do forward, we can watch each packet as they go. So basically that was it. <clears throat> we come over here, HTTP history. We can look at this. So here's our request, our response. Interesting. So you can see that in the actual response, we do capture this. It says nothing in here. Slash, 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 backslash, backslash, and a bunch of errors. So why this is supposed to be commented out so basically this, this is a comment that's just been commented out with a couple extra arrows right here. So maybe something, but highly unlikely based on the rest of the stuff in here, which is really nothing. Um, let's also do this. So let's, uh, we know there's a test page, right? And we know there's a test site. So let's do the same thing with the test site. So we're gonna hit reload here. That's gonna be spinning. Intercept, right? We're gonna do forward. We're gonna be back here to HTTP history and in, in the test, right? Still nothing really jumping out at me. So one of the things we could do here, let's try to fuzz this. So we're gonna do this send to, um, send to repeater because we're gonna make several different requests here. And let's see if there's any options. Let's try mess around with the HTTP methods. So maybe there's some type of script. Maybe that's like a, a web dev type directory that a test page. Maybe there's something there that we're not seeing. So I change it to options. I'm gonna hit go. And the interesting thing you can see here, I'm gonna maximize this, is there is web dev or dev 1.2. And it looks like we're allowed to do Pro, uh, prop find, delete, um, basically put, copy, move. So basically we can execute these commands uh, using burp or curl or something like that or another tool like Cadaver possibly to upload uh, code to the site. So let's, uh, let's give it a shot and see if we can create a shell or use this to create a shell. All right. So to first actually exploit this, uh, by the way, um, Burp Suite uh, actually has a great tutorial on how to exploit uh, the put method and other methods, as well as a tutorial on basically all parts of their tool, which is definitely worth checking out. So what we're going to do here first is I'm going to come over here to our intercept. I'm going to turn our intercept off, come back over to repeater. And the first thing we want to do here, we want to change this to put, right? We're going to put it into slash test. And we're going to come down here. I'm going to paste this in. So content length is 100. We have to have this space uh, right here between content length and PHP. Otherwise, for some reason, it doesn't work uh, from what I've seen. So let's give this a shot. So in theory, uh, actually, we have to get a file name too. One, so let's call this uh, sh.php. 
basically going to create a, a shell on this web server called shphp. And what this shell is basically going to do is basically allow us to type in sh.php, question mark, command, cmd, equals, and then the command that we want to execute if it works, right? So let's hit go up here. And it says it created. Excellent. So if that worked, what we should be able to do, and right here is where it says created. That work, what we should be able to do now is come back to our web browser. So let's minimize burp. Um, let's actually disable um, burp right now. So we're not sending everything through burp. Go to settings, no proxy, okay. Now we come back to our index page and refresh this. Refresh this. All right, so we have sh.php that has been uploaded. And we click on it. Should we do question mark cmd equals let's do id. So right now we have a basic shell on uh, the SIG OS. So knowing this, one of the things we can do is we can look at creating a more advanced shell uh, using something from like uh, pentestmonkey.com or I'm not sure if it's .com but pentestmonkey uh, to use a, a reverse shell. But First, to use a reverse shell, we really got to understand what the system's letting out back towards us. And this goes back to me saying uh, in my first videos, make sure that you use common ports to circumvent firewalls in case it's filtering. And here's a great way to figure out if a system's filtering, right? Let's do this. Let's run. Uh, let's just make sure that it is ETH0. I'm pretty sure it is. Okay. Let's do a TCP dump dash I. E0. I'm going to do host 192.168.1 at 141. I'm going to say end not port and not port 80. Basically, we're going to set up a uh, network sniffer uh, TCP dump. We're going to listen for all requests for 192.168.1.141 and anything that's not on port 80. The reason we're going to do not port 80 is we're going to be making web requests through um, the shell, but we want to be able to test other ports, see if we get responses from other ports back to us. Okay, so that's listening right now. And what we're going to do here is if we come up here, right? So I have a, a web server running on this box, but we, it doesn't really matter if we have a web server or not. So let's do wget http colon. Uh, 192.168.1.6 is my local host. And we're going to tell it to try port 8080, right? And we hit enter. That's going to spin. We don't know what happened there because we don't have a visual. But if we come up to our command here, or our terminal, we can see the HTTP alt is port 88. So that looks like it might be open. Let's check some other ports. We hit 8888 and we're going to check our TCP dump window. And we're not seeing any responses for 8888. So we see ARP requests coming in, but we're not seeing any for 888. And you can tell from up here too, it's still trying. So it's basically in timeout. So we try 443 and instantly that went through. So it looks like 443 is open. 80, uh, 80, 80 is open and port 80 is open at least that we're aware of outbound from sick OS to us. So if we set up a reverse shell. We should be able to use any one of those three ports to, um, get access. So what I'm going to do is in video two of the series of sick OS, I will actually look at trying to upload a reverse shell. Uh, so stay tuned. If you like these videos, make sure you subscribe below. Uh, leave comments, questions, things like that, and I will update uh, you guys as uh, time allows. Thanks, and have a good night.